be here with you on the Saturday Sampler for the Quilt Show. I am very excited. My name is Dee Christopher. Been uh, quilting for a very long time, and I have been an educator my all of my adult life. And probably um, there's a, a few cows out there that might have said that they were well educated while I was growing up because I tended to as a child even teach them so I've been teaching for a while and hopefully this will be a great experience for all of us today we're going to talk about those things that are my favorites they are the tools that I use all the time they're close at hand they're the ones that I grab and that I feel make my quilting experience a good one and my hope for all of you as you tune into this is that we will have a good experience and that you will find things that might help you to come um, to be a better quilter and to feel more relaxed about it and enjoy the process. So with that in mind, um, today uh, is tools day. But then we're going to move into looking at how we go about choosing our, our projects, our patterns, what we need to do with those before we get started. And then we're going to look at binding, sewing curves, partial seams, getting accuracy when we quilt with small blocks, um, all of that in the next seven weeks. And then after that, we're going to work on a project together, and I'm very excited about that. So. With that in mind, as tools go, I, I'm going to try to do this a little bit systematically so that we just walk through those favorite things. I also want to tell you why I like them, what, how they are helpful to me, and through the years as I've taught many, many beginning quilters how to quilt, that when they're struggling with something or they're having difficulty, that there's a tool, there's something out there that helps them as well. And these are those tools. And my cutting table has all of my rulers and things that I'm going to need when I'm there at the, at the quilting table ready to cut. Next to my sewing machine are, you know, those items again that I am going to have to grab quickly that are always around. And so Organization is key to that. I'm not the most organized person in the world, but I do have the things that I need and I want right there with me. So to get started, I'm going to my cutting table. I'm going to, ha I have my fabric, it is ready to go, and I want to cut for years. I loved using the Ulfa rulers. They were wonderful because they had an anti-glare to them. They were a uh, single color. I could, I could see through them. They had a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, a backing on them that they didn't slip as much as other rulers. And then a few years ago, I was introduced at um, a show to a new a new ruler that was on the market and boy did I get excited over this because I knew it would be an answer for a lot of women who were struggling with the ruler moving on them that they were losing strength in their hands they had arthritis um, some just it, the ruler moves on you so the ruler that I'm talking about that I want to share with you is called the quilter select and the reason that I, I love this ruler, if you have never tried it, you really need to try this ruler. It has a yellowish color to it that when you put it on the fabric, you do not see that, that yellowish color. Your, your fabric looks wonderful underneath of it. It is a little bit anti-glare, so you don't get that, um, that overhead light where you can't see the lines. The other thing that I love about this ruler is that if you look carefully, um, and I'm trying to keep the, the light off of the ruler, that it has a broken line here that um, at the half inch mark, which is different than some of the other rulers out there. All of the marks look the same. And it's very easy to put your fabric or your ruler down and get it at the quarter inch or the... Um, 
you know, the three quarter inch mark instead of the half mark. So I appreciate the broken line for the half inch marks on this. The other thing is that the lines are very um, narrow. And so when you're laying those lines next to your fabric to cut it, you get, it's, it's clean. It's not wide. It fits right in there and, and it works for you. The, um, so that the accuracy is there. But the, the key to this ruler is whatever they put on the back of this. Because when you set this ruler down on your fabric, it does not move. You can try and you can work your, your hands to try to get that to move. And when you're working with a, a long ruler, you're, you're holding it, you know, you're up. And when you get to your cutting, it starts to go like this. And you go, ah, I didn't get that accurate, and you have to recut and, and that type of thing. So what makes this ruler amazing is whatever is on the back of it that holds it tight to the, the fabric, and that movement is there, and you do not have to have to hold it down and press with your hand and hope that you that you don't miss it on the other end. So the Quilter Select ruler is just an awesome, awesome ruler, and you're going to love it. If you have never tried it, uh, make sure that you do because I, I absolutely fell in love with it. And the next thing um, is the rotary cutter. Through the years, there's been lots of rotary cutters. There are a ton of them on the market, but there's a couple of things that I really really appreciate and really like and that is the Ulfa. It's the one I have used for a long time. What I love about it is that I don't have to think about um, bringing the blade back down um, after I've done, I'm done using it. When you work with it and use it for cutting, all you have to do is squeeze the handle, the blade um, comes out and then when you are done and you let go of the handle and put it down the blade recesses if you're teaching children this is wonderful and it's ergonomic I don't get the strain in my arms um, like I do but I still you know after after a long day of cutting I, I get tired and Alex was the one who uh, said have you tried um, the one that with Quilter Select, and that's this one. I hadn't tried it, and so I did. And I, the first thing I noticed about it was how heavy it was. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to like that because it's so heavy. But then I used it, and I kept using it. And what I love about this is that, number one, it's very easy to be, if you're left-handed, or right-handed. I happen to be right-handed, but there's many left-handed people on, out there. And this one very easily adjusts by pushing this black dot. And when you hit it down, um, if you are left-handed, the blade comes out so that you're, you can use your left hand and cut very easily um, by pushing the blade again and um, bringing, that, bringing that down. Now I've got it on the right side and I can cut with that. And the, the weight of this is wonderful because actually it doesn't tire you out and you don't have to push as hard and it cuts beautifully. So there's, there's good things about both of those, but I love them. I use them both. Um, I'm finding that I'm, I'm using this one a little bit more these days, um, but they're, they're both excellent for their own um, purposes. So those are, those are two tools, the, the rulers and um, the rotary cutters. And this is something that's brand new, and I had not seen it before, and I um, recently saw it. And that is with these rulers, it's very it's hard to to move them and slide them around so quilter select came out with this little knob and it's not for um, holding it's to put it on there and holding it so that you can lift up the ruler and move it over where you need to go it's very helpful and if uh, 
you struggle with moving that and picking it up and adjusting your your ruler to your fabric this little knob um, can work really well for that on your ruler so that's something to keep in mind so I've cut my fabric I have um, got all of that ready and the next thing I want to talk about is scissors um, a good cutting scissors is worth its weight in gold so the um, the thing that I that I would like to share with you that's become my favorite and when I reach for a pair of scissors and grab it to cut my fabric and to work with that is Karen K. Buckley's scissors. The reason I really like them if um, is that they are serrated and they have the ability to cut all the way down to the point and that serrated blade, uh, blade is absolutely wonderful and I love it. When I do applique and I'm wanting to snip into those little spaces and those little spots, this scissors is fabulous for that. And for everything that I do with my cutting my fabric, I absolutely love um, having that ability to um, use those, those particular scissors. So, um, then once I've, I've done that, the other thing that I want to talk about real quick before we move on is my pressing. A good hot iron is wonderful. I do not personally use steam. What I have discovered with steam is that it stretches the fabric, if, especially if we're not pressing. If we, we find ourselves getting into that ironing motion, it's, it's very difficult to keep our blocks straight, especially half square triangles because we want to turn our arms with the iron. So I, I do not use steam. But to get that really flat seam, this wool pad is another one of those, those things that I thought, I don't really need that. And then I used one at a retreat that I was leading. Uh, one of the, a number of the women had them, and I used them a couple of times during that weekend. And I absolutely fell in love because it gives you a very, um, a very nice flat seam and who doesn't want one of those so then um, once we are sewing and working on our um, project pins um, for me I'm a little bit of a pin snob and I want a good sharp pin and I want it to be thin I, I, I don't want a heavy pin in there because it takes up too much fabric real estate and when I pull it out as I'm sewing or I'm working with it, it has it it leaves this this lump. And where does that lump of fabric go? And uh, so my first and foremost favorite pin is the Clover um, glass, very fine glass head pin. And if you look at it, it I don't even know that you can see it on the screen. I'll try to put it here where my where my hair is so there's something in the background. But it's very small and it's very sharp. They bend easy if that's the that's the con to this this particular pin. But I love it because it doesn't take up much fabric real estate. It is very sharp and I I adore it. Then I was recently introduced to um, the Quilter Select pins. It's they're new on the market if you haven't seen them. They too are very thin and very sharp and work absolutely wonderfully well. And the other cool thing about these pins, they come in this cool little case. And inside there the bottom of this has a magnet strip. And so you can open the box and the pins aren't going to go anywhere and they serve as a um, as a pin holder. And that's absolutely wonderful. So, you know, in terms of a pin, what I feel is really a, a good pin to use. And we're going to talk about pinning when we get to those projects because I have a another way that I like to... Um, to, to pin that's a little bit different than than most people. The the next items that I'm going to talk about is marking tools. Um, I have those things that that have become my favorite, 
and some that are, are fairly new to me. The, my number one marking tool that I use all the time, and it's always there, and I've been using it for, since forever, is a mechanical pencil. Um, I like the mechanical pencils because um, they are sharp all the time. I don't have to worry about it getting too dull and making too wide a mark so that um, I'm not sewing where I need to be on a line, especially for half square triangles or for flip and sew, those kinds of things. A good mechanical pencil is, is great for all of that. The, the second thing is um, when friction pens came on the market, fell in love. Who doesn't like a mark that erases and disappears? My con with this, and I love this pen, is that I forget and sometimes I will um, end up ironing my mark away. And that gets annoying and frustrating to me when I iron my mark and I have to remark. So that's that's my thing with this. But I would like to share with you a new pen that I think is going to be a game changer. I'm going to switch my camera so that you can see how this works. It is from Quilter Select and I have a little piece of fabric here and this is the pen. It's called Select Self Erase Marker and um, want to, to put that right here. And on this end is the marking line. And this end has a blade or a chisel point to it. And so when you mark your fabric, and I'm just going to put a mark right there, um, it's, it does the same job that the friction pen does, except that it's not going to go away. You can iron this and uh, you, can, you can work with it. It's going to stay there probably for a couple of days. It says on the packaging up to, and it'll disappear within 1 to 14 days. But for me, it's always been gone in a couple of days. But if I don't want that mark there, if I've put a mark and I want to get rid of it, I'm going to go to that chisel end. And this is where this gets exciting. It just erases and goes away. So it's not there any longer. It does not leave a mark. I've been trying to find um, marks on the fabric that I've tried over the last few days, and it's not giving me um, any marks on my fabric. It doesn't leave a residue. Um, I think it's going to be a game changer. It's just, it's just wonderful to be able to have a pen and yes, the friction pen erases when you put heat on it, but this one stays put and for as long as I need it to stay put. And um, as I'm working on it, and when I hit it with an iron, you know, it's it's not going to go away. The next pen that I want to talk about is my is the Micron pen, and these Micron pens are what I use when I do my um, labels and when I write on the quilt and sometimes I will do my own script for a quilt block or that especially when I get into my artwork. They're archival pens. They, um, they, the other thing that's really wonderful about these is they don't bleed. So when I write on them I don't get that bleeding spread that happens um, across um, the um, project. So I'm gonna go back um, to here for a moment and so those are my those are my basic marking tools that I really absolutely um, love and find that they give me the the ability to do what I need to do for for those. So when I get ready to sew, the thread is important to me because I want thread that has very little lint to it. I don't want that build up in my machine because I can spend many a day sewing for six to eight hours you know, per day, um, sometimes even more if I've got something that I need to get completed. So my, my favorites right now, one is from Superior Threads and it's Masterpiece and I buy it in these cones because I use, I go through a lot of thread and so I feel like I get a little bit more for my money on that. So Masterpiece is a is a wonderful thread that, that I absolutely adore. Um, I also use Aurifil 
and I like it. It has very little lint and my sewing machine likes it and where it works well in my machine. I also, um, there's, you know, again, another new thread from Quilter Select. This one is an 80 weight for machine quilting and it has this wonderful sheen to it and it's very strong and sinks right into the fabric and just gives you a beautiful um, result when it when it's done. Uh, the other one is a 60 weight uh, from Quilter Select and again very little lint it's it's wonderful uh, it's it's very fine but it's very strong and so those are the threads that that I tend to um, to use almost always um, in terms of that and then um, there's another product that I learned about not that long ago and uh, the quilt show had the people that um, invented it or uh, have created this product and it's called Acorn Precision Piecing Products. There's two things that I really like about it. They have this um, pressing solution and they have a glue and those are the two products that I really absolutely love. This glue, what I like about it is the fact that it dries quickly and it holds um, things in place. So I'm using it for my applique, I'm using it for my small blocks, um, and I love this this particular little bottle because that point is really fine and the glue comes out in such a small little drop. And it doesn't leave a mark on my fabric. Sometimes when you use different glues, um, you can see that mark or it, it soaks into your fabric. This one, I have not found that it does that. And that's why I really, really like that. And then there's this um, pressing solution. Again, this was brought to my attention on the quilt show, and then uh, several of my students had this that they had purchased, and I watched what it did. We were I was teaching um, actually the quilts um, similar to the one behind me in the center where all those points come together and she was having trouble getting it to, to lay down. We had already gone through the process. She had taken it out and she was struggling with that and someone walked over with this product and said, try this. And we put this on the seams and she pressed it after that and it just released the fabric and it laid flat and it didn't come back. And that was to me an absolute fabulous thing. And they have this um, little tube that you can put that in. And it also has a chisel top where you can run it right along the seam lines. And it makes it, makes it very handy and very useful for that. I also use a very small spritz bottle because um, sometimes I want to cover the area a little bit more. And, and a good spritz will, will do it for me. So that, that was a game changer for me. So that was, again, one of those purchases that I made because I felt that, that um, it was going to make me a better piecer, a better quilter when, when, the, when it came down to, to those items. Then when I applique, uh, there is a, a number of things that I really appreciate. And that was, again, um, using these Appliquick tools. I use them for a lot of things other than applique. I have to say they're they're fun little they're fun little tools. This one is where you hold it in place, and if you go to the quilt show, you're going to see um, a place where um, the woman who um, from Spain who made these products and they're they're hers. She teaches you exactly how to use them. Alex has done a couple of segments on this as well. We will get to that when we do applique um, in this project, but I do like these tools for many reasons and you're going to see me using them um, for lots of different things. So um, with, the, with the applique, I, you need an applique pressing sheet. Protect your iron, protect your ironing board. Um, these are a silicone sheet. Um, they're out there on the market, and there's different kinds, different different methods that you can use. Um, 
and different products that you can use. But I do like the applique sheet and I use it all the time. And I can do many different things with it. And when we get into applique projects, you're going to see different ways and techniques that you can use that applique pressing sheet. Then there's the threads that I use with my applique hand and um, specifically hand. That's my, that's kind of my thing. I, I do the machine applique, but not as much as I do hand applique. And a long time ago, um, I was introduced to Superior's Bottom Line Thread, and I bought this ring uh, years ago. And this bottom line thread is very fine. It gives me a little bit of a, a sense that I'm using silk because silk is my favorite for applique. Um, but I love it because I can get all these colors and I can purchase it and this has lasted me and I'm still using it after years of applique and, and really love how fine it is, how strong it is, and that when I am trying to do amp hand applique it disappears into the fabric and you don't see it. Quilter Select also has their 80 weight which has a wonderful sheen to it. They come also in these these bobs. You can get them um, with both Superior and Quilter Select with um, all the different colors. You can get them in neutral and you can get them in pastels. So there's lots of variety and lots of ability to purchase threads for um, your applique. The um, and again, the Karen K. Buckley scissors works for me in terms of, of applique. There's a few other products I've probably gone out of order. When I need to make a lot of blocks um, behind me, that quilt with all of the um, you know, flying geese, there are papers, there are things that I want, and especially when it comes to half square triangles, which are used in a lot of quilts. And if I have to make a lot of them, I have found that I get the best accuracy and I absolutely love these Star Singles papers. And these papers um, are numbered. They tell you right on it how big you need to cut your squares. You follow the numbers and the arrows. You sew it. You cut it apart. And they come out perfect absolutely every time and abs and adore it and adore it. I have tried a lot of the other papers and I do not know why. For me personally, these work really well and many of my students appreciate them too. Um, I've shared them as well as the other papers and you know if you have a paper that you love and that you that you like, go for it. Keep it and and use it because we're 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 here to help you have a good experience in quilting and whatever it takes to, to get and accomplish that, we want to help you do that. So the other um, tool when I uh, need to turn something and I need to get good sharp corners, this um, turning tool from RNK Distributors is like absolutely fabulous. I don't know what it is about this tool, but I love it. I love the feel of it in my hand. I can get into those corners and I can get my corners to come out really, really wonderful when I use this tool. It was again a tool I say, I don't need that. I can use a lot of other things to get to turn that until I tried it. And once I tried it, I kind of fell in love. The, um, I, when I get to paper piecing, there's two things that I feel are absolutely necessary with paper piecing, and that is I, a piece of junk mail. I use a card that comes in the mail. That's what I fold my, my paper back with. And the other one that I don't need this, and none of us do because we have rulers and our rulers will work. But it takes more time and it takes more effort to use the ruler to get our quarter inch cut. And this is called an add a quarter and it has this little lip or this blade on it. And it just stops right at that and you can cut your fabric and it makes the job quicker, easier, and less painful. And so this is one of those, those tools that I really don't want to not have. 
in my toolbox or in my arsenal. So when it then there's those moments when we are sewing and we need to um, rip out a seam. Now, of course, some of us never have to rip out seams. We're really good. And I'd like to say I'm one of them, but I'm not. I use my seam ripper all the time. My favorite seam ripper goes with my machine. It is the Bernina seam ripper. And what I'm looking for in a seam ripper is I want to have it very sharp and very small so it fits under those threads that I need to cut and I need to get rid of. So that's my number one favorite. But coming close in second is this one. And again, it's very small. It's, you know, it's very sharp and it's very small and it's inexpensive, um, really. Um, Clover has some great ones too. Those are, those are fabulous. But I lose the, the tops of my seam rippers all the time. And this one has become a favorite of mine because there is no top to lose. When you are done, you just simply put the blade back in and the, the point is gone. You're not going to stick yourself. You can put it in your carrying case, whatever. Um, so that's why it's number two for me. Um, and, and the fact that it's inexpensive and it's very sharp. So that is, as far as a, as seam rippers go those are those are my favorites in terms of that and when we get to applique we're going to talk about needles and there are different opinions on the kinds of needles that we use for applique and for putting our binding on if we do it by hand all of that my what I tend to go back to is what fits in my hand and feels good and those are straw needles and milliner's needles and we're going to we'll spend time with those at um, a later point then um, when I am sewing at my machine I have this little pointy thing um, a good friend of mine made this for me it's very lovely um, out and so I have um, this one that I that I love and I love it mostly because she made it for me and it just makes me feel good when I use it. Um, the you know there are there are plenty of these on the market uh, to help you guide your fabric through. And the other one that was a surprise to me, um, I had it you know it was just there, and that's an orange stick. And sometimes the fabric with the pointed you know the point on these will go into my fabric and I and I don't necessarily want that because it'll snag or whatever. Um, so the orange stick has both this chiseled end to it and it has the pointed side and the wood of it helps certain fabrics um, go through the you know that I can use and, and work with this. So those are those are those tools that, that I have for that. And so as we get started and we're going to be learning how to sew on curves. We're going to be doing partial seams. We are going to work with very small pieces of fabric. All of these tools that I've just shared with you will come in handy. At some point in time, they're the ones my go-to. So find your go-to. And if you have tools and product that you absolutely adore and love, and hang on to them because, you know, the, the right tool for the right um, place and the right time is just vital. Um, my dad was a carpenter and you know he was too. The right tool in the right place will give you the best results for what you're trying to accomplish and that's what we want to do and I want to encourage you as we move forward in these classes that if you have questions or you're running into difficulty and you're not finding the end result that you're wanting I do hope that you'll ask because you're not the only one that's probably having that problem or have those questions and we can answer them and do the best that we can so that your quilting experience is everything that you want it to be and that it's fun and an enjoyable half, uh, half, you know, pastime that, that you get into. Um, just in case you want to know if there was anything that I showed you today or a product that you want to try you can go to the quiltshowstore.com and in 
when you get to that site, you'll see some links at the top of the page, and one of them will say Facebook YouTube Class Supplies. Take your cursor and uh, hover over that, and you will get a drop down menu, and right at the top, it says D Saturday Sampler, and if you click on that, you'll see all of the products that I've mentioned today, um, and maybe one or two that I forgot um, to, to talk about there, so that you have the ability to purchase that if you choose to do that. So, with that, I want to say I am so excited to be a part of the quilt show and to come into your homes and be with you on Saturday mornings. So thank you for being here today. Um, I look forward to next Saturday. We're going to be talking about choosing that project and getting started and how to read that pattern and make the, the best decisions that we can about our fabrics and color. So until next Saturday, have a great week, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.